Hello guys, in this video I will show you the DNA results, so predicted phenotype, appearance, uh, traits, you know, and of course GD match results of an Iron Age Central Asian nomad. I couldn't find what kind of a culture this person belonged to, like information on the culture. Um, if I had to guess, this is probably some kind of a Sogdian individual. But he had a very exotic white DNA, like instantly you can spot E1B white DNA very uncommon for Central Asia. It is a Southern European and Middle Eastern Y-DNA. Nashakot, which is my app that predicts phenotype based on raw DNA data, predicted him to have a Greek-shaped nose, uh, black hair at 99%, definitely had black hair, and brown eyes at 63%. Now, what's interesting is actually he had BEH2. He had two derived alleles in BEH2 mutation, which is why if he took a 23andMe, 23andMe would predict him to have blue eyes. You can see on the right, uh, on the top right of the screen. This is what his prediction with 23andMe would have been like. And of course, YSEC also predicted him to have blue eyes because it's just YSEC. YSEC is only, it's only really looking one at one variation to determine eye color. Very unreliable, very stupid prediction. But you know, Snipper Free predicted him to have brown eyes and I tend to agree with Snipper Free because he had some very exotic genotypes in other variations uh, that are not BH2. Even though I'm going to leave the link to download the file in the description, I'm sure that nobody will actually explore and get into the nitty-gritty of his genotype. But this is a very fascinating genotype that I found in Kito Gigi. And my, my Nashakot actually looks at this to determine uh, coloring. So this is a pretty important variation. And here he had AA. And uh, AA is a very West African, very Sub-Saharan African genotype. And this variation has to do with skin color. And in fact, this is the most important variation for skin color. So make of that what you want. I depicted him with light skin because I personally believe, like looking at modern people who inhabit this region, they mostly have light skin. But based on the genotype here, it's possible that he might have had darker skin tone. As you might have spotted earlier, I did not depict him looking mongoloid, no East Asian facial features. And this is because um, he did not have derived EDAR. This individual also did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was likely uh, lactose intolerant as an adult. He did not have the sociopath gene. His genotype in Comte's uh, Valmet variant is pretty typical for Europeans. He was heterozygous, which means AG. Uh, I'm also AG, I'm also a European, and I also have the same genotype here. Now, uh, the A allele is most typical, most common in Europeans, and everybody outside of Europe does not really have the A allele at a high frequency, at a markable, markable frequency. Pretty much everybody outside of Europe has GG here. Um, but Europeans have AA and AG and GG as well. His genotype in DRD2's Pro 319 Pro variant was very stereo stereotypically European AA. Now, I encourage you to actually open your raw data file and see what you have there. When you do open it, you will be shocked to see that you have neither CC nor CT nor TT, uh, which is what is shown on SNPedia. Uh, that's because SNPedia uses outdated namings for the alleles. Remember that every time you encounter an AG or CT variant and your raw file lacks the alleles referenced by SNPedia, the A allele always corresponds to T and the G allele always corresponds to C and vice versa. Keep in mind this is only in AG or CT variants. If it's, for example, GT or CA, it's not going to work this way. His genotype in this variant of DRD2 kind of shocked me. From my observations, the A allele in Pro319 Pro always comes together with a G here. But, you know, this linkage events happen quite frequently and can explain this phenomenon. Uh, this is his result with Eurogenes K13. Now, instantly you can notice the high amount of West Asian and North Atlantic. Those are very Iranic components and the low amount of, like, East Asian and everything else. So this makes me think this is a Sogdian sample and it's closest to Tajik's. And it can be modeled as a mixture of Tajiks with something more like, I guess, Northern European. But I'm wondering maybe this is because the Tajik reference group here on Eurogenes K13 is a little bit more Southern than uh, Tajiks today. I don't know. This is his result with MDLP K16. You, by looking at this result, you instantly know that this is an Iranic individual and not a Turkic individual. For example, there is almost no Siberian, no Southeast Asian, no Northeast Asian. There is no East Asian components here, uh, and there is a lot of Indian. For example, if you look at uh, Sintashta DNA through this calculator, it's not going to score 20% Indian, guys. It's going to score 0% Indian. So the oracle makes it closest to Yagnobis from Zarafshan and uh, Badakhshan people, and it can be modeled as a mixture of people from Badakhshan plus like Taj uh, Dargin is, I think, in, in uh, Dagestan, right? And Tabasaran is also in Dagestan. So it's basically getting modeled as a mixture of people from Badakhshan plus people from Dagestan.
Now, all these GD match results are actually somewhat close to reality. So you see, the previous uh, Eurogene's K13 result model, this is a mixture of Tajik plus Northern European, and MDLP K16 modeled as, as a mixture of Tajik plus Dagestan. Well, on G25, this sample is getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik plus both, both Northern European and Dagestan. Uh, as you can see, it's closest to Tajiks from Yegnob. Uh, this is not Tajiks, right? Yegnobi is Pamiri people, right? It's not Tajiks. So I think now with this result in mind, I can accurately say that you're looking at the DNA of a Sogdian individual. Also the location, it also matches Sogdia. So this is probably uh, a Sogdian individual. And this is his result with Harappa World. He's scoring only 3% Siberian, so not much Turkic, not, so, not much Turkic admixture. And here he's once again closest to Tajiks. Um, and he can, get, he can be modeled as a mixture of Tajik plus Russian or Ukrainian or Lithuanian or even Finnish here. Uh, number six, very interesting result. A little bit more northern than Tajiks today. This is his result with Pan DNA LK10 Ancient. And please notice the amount of CHG he's scoring. He's scoring 41% CHG. That's crazy. Like the most in the Oracle, the population with the most CHG has like 47%. And he's got 41. Uh, however, you have to keep in mind the CHG here does not represent only Caucasus. It also represents a part of uh, ancestry that's from uh, Iran Neoli Neolithic or BMAC by extension and he scores 13% ASI which is why he's closest to actually Pashtuns here um, it's the ASI that makes him clo closer to Pashtuns than to Chechens for example and he can be modeled two-way oracle models him as a mixture of Baloch plus Mordovian or Russian or Baloch plus Finnish uh, very interesting result and it pretty much represents the history the ethnic history of the Iranic nation which is like northern Europeans Sintashta like people mixing with uh, people who are like Baloch with Punt DNA LK12 he's also scoring a crazy amount of Caucasus HG 39.5% Caucasus HG but keep in mind that the Caucasus HG here also there is no Iranian as you can notice there is no Iranian Neolithic or BMAC category here so he's just scoring Caucasus HG because that's the closest population to these populations the Oracle models him as close to Tajiks and uh, Afghans rather than groups in the Caucasus because of the high uh, South Asian that he's scoring. In the two-way Oracle, interesting things I can notice is 69% Afghan Pashtun plus 30% Mardvin or 72% Afghan Pashtun plus 28% Czech. This is what he scores with Gidrosia's Ancient Eurasia K6. Interestingly, the highest component here is uh, Ancestral North Eurasian, it's kind of a tie between Ancestral North Eurasian and Antufian, as you can see, but I think Ancestral North Eurasian is a little bit more dominant here, it's 35.43 uh, versus 35.39, Ancestral North Eurasian is a little bit higher here, uh, it's a crazy high number, like, the only people who score more A&E than this individual are probably people in Native, like Native Americans, and he can be modeled as a mixture of, among other things, Iranian Neolithic plus Iron Age Step, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And this is his result with Gidrosia K3. He's scoring 14% East Eurasian, but I think this is not from uh, any like Mongoloid or kind of recent Mongoloid admixture. This is more from ancient, like like literally Paleolithic Eurasian, East Eurasian admixture that he got from ancient North Eurasians. So this is not a Mongoloid admixture that he has. Uh, this is his result with the Eurogenes K36. Now, as you can see, this is not from GD Match. This is from Admixture Studio. I just like the format better. I like the way it looks. I like how I can actually include it in a screenshot and put it in a video, uh, unlike the GD Match result. But if you run this sample through GD Match Eurogenes K36, you're going to see pretty much the same result. Uh, what's interesting is he's scoring a little bit of Finnascandian, a little bit of Finnish, which might be one of the reasons why on G25 this sample is getting a little bit of Finnish admixture. Uh, he's also scoring Volga Ural, and I'm not seeing, I'm seeing 0.8% East Central Asian, so definitely very much unlike the modern people who live in this area. Thank you guys for having watched until the end. You can download this sample in 23andMe format uh, from link which is going to be in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Uh, comment down below if is, is there any inaccuracies I've said in this video. Maybe I've said something that you don't like. Uh, comment on it.